right, welcome everybody to another episode of What the Fick. What the Fick, man? I just I love the name of the show. It's the best name show out there. I'm Spencer Israel here with Ian Cully, head of fixed income currencies and commodities at All Star Charts. Ian, how are we doing today? Excellent. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday, indeed. Uh, I'm hyped. Uh, a because I've been awake since four in the morning, but B because we got a great guest on today, Bill. Baruch from Blue Line Futures, and we're going to just run to the gamut, I suspect. We're going to talk uh, bonds, definitely. Uh, we'll probably talk, um, you know, S&Ps, uh, broad index futures. We'll probably talk uh, commodities as well. Uh, Bill has thoughts, and uh, you have questions, and hopefully he has answers. We have questions. Hopefully he has answers. So, uh, Ian, you ready? Let's bring him on. Let's bring him on. Bill, how goes it? Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to be on here with you today. Thanks, awesome. for, so we... thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Um, wh- why don't we just start a high level? I-, I know you guys were speaking before. Um, I-, I titled the-, the name of the show. I couldn't think of a better title, so I just called it Will Bonds Stop Falling? Wh- why, don't, why don't you just uh, give us your 10,000-foot view on where things stand with the bond market, and then we can dive deeper from there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the bond market has, I mean, everybody knows it's been a bloodbath out there. Turn on the TV, you hear about the bond market falling apart every single day. It, it's really do or die right right here. I think there's a lot of support down here. But first, why did we get here? Um, I think you look start this, the start of this month, Fitch downgraded the U.S. Uh, debt and uh, their, their debt rating. Um, but why? And, and, and even though they put it on warning, it was uh, the Congress that, that uh, uh, revised their budget deficit for the quarter from 750 billion to 1 trillion. Now that 250 billion dollar revision, I mean, that means they're they're printing, they're issuing more bonds. But if you go back to 2003, no single annual budget deficit was more than 250 billion prior to 2003. So, I mean, this is a big move. I mean, it's just just nonstop spending from Congress. Uh, now you got the shorts piling on. Uh, GDP, Atlanta Fed GDP hit 5.8% uh, this for for this quarter. I mean, it's, I mean, everything's kind of fallen into place to here to see yields rise, but but can they go higher than this? Um, and that, that's the real question. That's what we're here today to figure out, right? Yeah, I mean, when I look at the charts, I mean, that's exactly what they're doing. They continue to catch higher. I mean, I love this overlay chart of the 30-year, uh, you know, the U.S. 30-year yield and the live cattle's futures, just because it, it just, they're both just wow. clear structural uptrends. And they, they line up so well together. It speaks to the rise in rates and it speaks to, to, to the bull market and commodities. Yeah, that's a good chart. The, I, yeah, and then when we look at the 5, 10, and 30 year yields, well, at least the five and at least the 10 and the 30 have, have started to break out. I mean, the question is will the, will the five year follow? Um, I mean, if, if these, you know, if the 10 and 30 continue to rise, I imagine the five will. But you, you, you're thinking not so fast on these moves in rates. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, not not so fast. It's it's been a big move. Um, I think a lot of a lot of what what I just talked about as, as fundamental catalyst ha- has begun to price in. Um, you know, it's it's not only what's being priced in from from already in the headlines, but but how the, the situation is deteriorating. You know, how much more can Congress spend? You know, how how bad is is the uh, tax income that the U.S. is taking in? Um, you know, how how negative are the big hedge funds? Bridgewater and Ackman that are getting short. I mean, a lot of this is being priced in. That's what that's what's really kind of grabbing the headlines right now. So I, I think it's all it's all starting to be discounted. Uh, speaking of Atlanta Fed GDP now, I mean, five point eight percent is very likely to be revised lower too. So I I think that there's there's a lot of support down here that we haven't fully broken out yet, and and there's at least time for pause and and, and at least to, to assess the situation. Uh, if if new shorts can come into the market, new players continue to pound this thing. Uh, if the situation continues to te- deteriorate, or if it's uh, it sort of uh, it, you know has gone too far, and, and and I think that's where we are right now. I, th- I think I think right now the probability is that we have gone too far, and there is quite a bit of support. Go back to the early two thousands. There's a big trend line that uh, that we're running into in the ten year uh, ten year continuous chart. This is also where we came out of the great financial crisis. Uh, when when uh, when the treasuries really started to rally too, so I think it's a big level of technical support too. It's interesting the thirty year yield or excuse me thirty year T bonds are are falling back, retesting its uh it, its lows from last year. 
Uh, so it be interesting. it's a logical level to see, again, to see some pause. Uh, you know, that definitely makes sense to, to see uh, this decline uh, just stall for a little bit. Uh, I think the measured move from this, you know, potential potential top here is all the way down around 113. Do you think you think we could get down there and then maybe maybe see a flush and then and then that rally in bonds kicks in? Yeah, I mean, all, all I know is is when you start hearing the bankers, you got the bankers, you know, and I, I look back to 2018 and, and this was this was a trade. I was buying bonds in 2018 and and uh, I was I was actually at the Ryder Cup in Paris with my dad. I had to leave the 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 field watching watching the golf itself and go to an area where I could get cell service because it was in Paris. So this is early hours of U.S. session, and uh, and I was managing my bond position because I just felt like the, the low was coming. But if you go back to then too, you had the all the bankers, Jamie Dimon calling for six percent ten year. Everybody's out there, and we got to remember these these bankers that that are you know basically you know my father's generation, an older generation, you know that have seen yields really for most of their lifetime, you know, 7% and higher um, they're, they're out there calling for because that's normal for them. But I, I think this is the new normal is, is a ceiling, you know, into this range. Maybe we can get to 5% if we pause and then continue to go higher. But when these guys start coming out, it's usually been, you know, with the headlines too, it's, it's, it's brought in a, a bottom of the bonds and, and the, which is a top in the yields. And that 2018 was a big turn. I mean, we, well, well, we well, heard about that and, and Bonds really rallied out of that hole and and uh, didn't look back for a long time. Well, Bill, for pe for people my age or my ilk, um, having no yield is normal, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our, our <laughs> age. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I don't know what it's like, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I guess I know now, but uh, well, yeah. you know, another thing people talk about positioning, and um, you know, everybody's saying the the positioning. I, I've seen two two sides of the positioning talking about. First, there's positioning that that uh, the commitment of traders and, and the bonds themselves, which which highlights the the, the leverage traders, the CTAs. Like I, I run a CTA, run a managed futures fund, but you know that's what this is taking. And these are these are the Ackmans that are coming in and and shorting futures. It's a ten to one short, if not if not probably more now. Um, and that's that's being priced into that as a, as a ten to one. It's a record basically, a short position in the bonds. But then you hear the other side of it. Where, um, where Bank of America survey talks about um, advisors and, and and portfolio managers now they're actually long bonds long long fixed income and and I, I think there's two sides of the way this is to digest because the portfolio managers I also run a registered investment investment advisor where I, I manage portfolios and, and I'm buying fixed income in there I'm not touching that for I mean I'm not even thinking about moving the bulk of that for three to five years that's a, a long term position and, and yeah of course if if you run an 80 20 portfolio a 60 40 portfolio or if you manage retirees at that of 40 60 of course you're locking in a five percent yield here if not more of course you are for for that for that fixed income bucket so of course you're buying so there's two sides of it I I, I think what you have to look at is is that it's becoming very overcrowded from a trading perspective mm -hmm. from the commitment of traders in the futures and that's important. But from an actual uh, just portfolio construction standpoint, it, it, it's definitely not overcrowded. And, it, you know, advisors are just starting to really reincorporate bonds since they have such a, a, a juicy yield right now back Absolutely. into those portfolios. Absolutely. I mean, you look back. Um, and I, I, I launched mine, my RIA in basically 2020, let's say I started getting money under management then. And, but, but, but prior to that, um, you know, you, if you're what, if you manage money for 10, 15 years, I mean, it was, you had fixed income that's saying, okay, the market sells off, you know, these bonds are going to rally and it's going to kind of sort of help e equal it out. Now, uh, that didn't happen last year, but, but you actually now have yield. So, so people were, were just basically having the bond part of the portfolio as, as something that should be there because it, because because it doesn't really have a purpose of yield right yet, but but it could rally if it should rally if if the if the stock market corrected and that sort of evens out the portfolio. Now there's an actual real purpose, you know, locking the five percent. Now I, I I think that's a great purpose when the market stock market, you know, the S and P at forty six hundred to forty two hundred, this range that we've seen, it's great to be locking in there. You know, I was I thought it was the sort of not that smart when the S and P was was you know below 4000 i mean it sounded like a free lunch but there's no such thing as a free lunch because you got to look at the opportunity cost if you weren't investing in the stock market uh, and you, or you're underinvesting in the stock market because you locked in 5% bonds you left a lot on the table uh over the past uh past year so bill i, I want to know when it comes to fixed income what you're doing right now i mean from from the future side 
what I'm looking at is, uh, I mean, I'm I'm not positioned in, in in bonds per se right now, but I'm positioned in asset classes that would definitely capitalize uh, and and where where bonds would rally, like gold and, and metals. Um, it, they're they're hanging by the skin of their teeth right here. This is an area. I mean, they've been bludgeoned. I'm I'm not having a good month. So if, if you're somebody that's looking to invest in a CTA, you want to buy CTAs in a drawdown, buy a managed futures program in a in a drawdown, but um, you know, so we, we'll, I'm sure we'll touch on gold here in a moment, but fixed income on the, on the uh, advisor side, you know, we're, we're, we're still a shorter duration. Uh, we're, we're kind of doing some due diligence on, on some little uh, intricacies like an eyeball or something like that yield curve stuff. But, but the bulk of our fixed income is really within, you know, shorter duration with fund managers like a Rick Reader, Black BlackRock and a Jeff Gunlock. And, and um, you know, that I, I think it's a great spot to be invested in right now where, these funds, if, if the two-year yield comes down, these funds are going to make money from a, from a notional value perspective, and you're clipping your 5%. And that's a great portion to have in a portfolio, um, especially after a stock market rally, to, to really have that that 40% in a 60-40 or that 80, a 20% in an 80-20. So, but, um, but yeah, from, from the futures perspective, you know, it, it's brought a lot of pain to the precious metals complex and uh, not only the bonds, but, but the currency space too. So um, I, I hope the bleeding can, can stop here soon. Yeah, as, you know, as rates rise, so does the dollar, right? They've been just, just tracking each other uh, extremely closely over the past year and a half. It really, really kicked in that that strong positive correlation. Really kicked in when when the Fed started hiking last year in March, yeah. and since then, I mean, it's just it's it, it's been a positive correlation. It, it remains uh, strong, remains intact. So you know, yields are rising, and we're getting a failed potential failed breakdown. And it's obviously, it's a failed breakdown. The question is whether or not the dollar index is going to take out those pivot highs from July. Um, can we get back above there and more pain? That's, more pain that's, for risk assets. That's the question. I mean, that, that's that's the big the big question here. Um, yeah, I mean, as, as the yields stay higher, I mean, it encourages flows to the dollar. And that that's really what what's underpinning the big rally. Um, you know the there, there's also some some thought process too that that uh, the ECB maybe kind of you know the path the Fed is and 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 started to turn their their they started calling where they could be slowing their hiking down because that dollar index is 57 percent uh, the euro uh, mm-hmm. it's also a big catalyst though is the Japanese yen and that's the real big catalyst the Japanese yen is back down to those basically November lows. Uh, it, that dollar index doesn't include the Chinese yuan, which has just been decimated this year. Uh, it's been it's been a heck of a heck of a year for those Asian currencies, and and that's been a big tailwind though to the U.S. dollar. So it, because it's always it's, not, it's when you look at a currency market, it's not about the dollar or not about the euro. It's about what the pair is. Who who is it trading against? And right. um, the other currencies right now are are clearly a bit a bit weaker. I mean, you look at some of the commodity driven currencies are also obviously getting bludgeoned. You know, the Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar. Uh, all, all getting hit pretty hard. So that's a big tailwind to, to underpinning the strength of the U.S. dollar, especially as rates are rising. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting to see the environment where rates rates and the dollar are rising. And you look at the commodity space, the two major pro-cyclical groups of the commodity space, energy and base metals, and they're both having two completely different reactions. Like energy enjoys uh, the rising rate environment, Really, really seeing this rotation into into the energy sector as as tech comes uh, under some selling pressure, uh, energy commodities are starting to perk up. While Dr. Copper really can't seem to get it going, and just based in industrial metals in general are rolling over. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, my thing is is energy run the, runs the world. Petroleum runs the world. You know, er- everything's made from energy. So when when crude oil starts to cost more. Everything costs more, and and they, you know, for you first you see it at the pump. Um, I mean, it even trickles into agriculture. I mean, what, what you're paying for fertilizer and fuel costs and stuff like that. So, I mean, energy runs the world. Pe- people, I mean, people think that you can get rid of rid, rid of energy, and that's been the you know narrative prior. People have learned more recently in the past year that you can't. And uh, but but because of that, it's been a very underinvested space. And and I think that you know, near term, obviously they're they're with the 5.8 percent Atlanta Fed GDP and some global recession fear still lingering out there. I and mean, people are still calling for a recession here in the U.S. But uh, there is some question: Is this does this crude oil rally have some sustainability in the near term? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, we're up here at 80 bucks, 80, 82. 80, we put out research every single day. Crude oil would cover 
82 and a half, 83 was her target to the upside. Uh, consolidation here is is warranted. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, the underinvestment in, in the in the energy space, I mean, we could we I wouldn't be surprised to see higher prices, even though they're they're due for a pause here now. Now, the the fact that energy is rising, it's a big component to uh, to inflation and thus um, um, bond yields. Now, where whereas the copper, Dr. Copper, it's a real pulse on China. And Dr. Copper really got that name, you know, from early 2000s when when um, just you know, China's growth became became massive. It was a, it was a massive underpinning in, in global growth. They consume fifty percent of the world's copper. So it, it's been a big question here right now where the trajectory of, of, of China is. Now I, I am a bit of a contrarian. I, I will admit. So that's why I'm looking at at copper here and saying, okay. I mean, the negativity around China has got to be peaking. The negativity around 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 it. I mean, does bode for some opportunity potentially here. So with caution, of course, but. Yeah, look at it now. You got you got some supply down here going back to the the was at the um, that, that rally out of the hole there uh, mm -hmm. prior to this year, uh, and you got the trend line. I mean, that's a pretty pretty good trend line down there that that we're at least tested. It it, it at least warrants the, the idea that copper could rally from here. Uh, Bill, it sounds like you want to be you're you're itching to be a contrarian here. Yeah. Yeah, I I am I am. Yeah. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, you know, timing is everything, and and I I you know have stepped in a bit early here. I didn't think this month could get as bad as it has, but uh, you know, what they say markets can stay uh, irrational. I don't know if it's irrational or not. Mister Market's always right. You know, it's you know, they say markets stay irrational longer. You can say solve it or not. So you gotta be gotta be careful. But um, yeah, Mister Market's always right. I I uh, but but money's made when when looking at these divergences though, and and if you if you can time those type of divergences as well, you, you'll do well for yourself. So as long as uh, copper is above what 350, 355. Yeah, I mean, see those closing those closing lows. I mean, back in uh, back in May, I mean, we were really looking at those like three sixty two. This is do time yeah. do or die time right here. Um, I mean, you know, otherwise we can go down to three fifty. So when you're trading in leverage, you know, you do want to get out of the way a bit and and maybe wait for if that trend line breaks, look for look for three fifty potentially if we get a decisive move through three sixty. You know, I you, you sent over a chart last night, and I absolutely loved this chart. And I would I would love for you to to speak more to it, um, yeah. and what you're seeing here with the gold futures, the candles here, and in the blue, in the blue line we have we have the the Chinese yuan, yep. and in the 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 orange yellow line we have the thirty year T bond futures. Yeah, yeah, I I, I like to look you know through parallels, you know through times that I've experienced in the market. My experience, I mean, I've been trading since. Since like 2005, I started trading uh, gold futures when uh, when I was in college. You know, working with it. my dad and I had an account together, and and we were I loved it. I was working at an investment bank. I was like, I need to get out of this investment bank and start trading. You know, and I, I came down to Chicago and and started handing my name out. Ended up ended up with a brokerage spot in, at the Chicago Board of Trade. So I've been trading gold, and and I ended up luckily was a mentor that was. Uh, um, you know, who, who traded gold and I learned a lot from them. And uh, so I've always traded gold and I like to look at different experiences, things that I've been involved in the market. He, my mentor also traded bonds as well. So, um, and then I, this is, this charts from 2018 and uh, in 2018, I was giving that, that, that story. I was at the Ryder cup with my father in Paris and, um, and I was at a leave to get to start to manage this, but you know, look at this story here. It's a very similar story to what we're seeing right now, where where you got gold just just selling off for you know for then it was about three months, four months long. This has been a, a month long sell off, but it, it correlated very well with with the bonds, the Chinese yuan, and everything really just just moving moving lower in tandem. And you know, right now it's it's the the growth questions around China, be, you know, because they can't get this post COVID uh, economy up and running. Uh, there's a lot of property issues, et cetera. And then, you know, the bond fallout here in the U.S., as we discussed earlier in the show, when we hash it, but it, there's just a number of narratives here, but it's very similar. You know, going back to 2018 as well with, you know, Jake said, Jamie Dimon, why not? But it was also the trade war. When Trump's trade war against China was slowing China's growth. And that's why the yuan was getting crushed. And, and you thought like, oh, these geopolitical fears, these geopolitical problems, why isn't gold rallying? I learned a lot uh, during that period of time. So I'd like to look back at it and, uh, and say, wow, this is a very similar time. But at the light of the end of the tunnel here is, is gold bottoms, you know, into that low that, that you see here through that October, November time, August, gold bottom in August, bonds went a little bit lower through uh, October and the yuan bottomed out before November. You can see gold never looked back. That was the low in gold from that time. 
Uh, and, and I mean, and here we are, I mean, now we're, you know, we're just below 2000. I mean, you're coming off 2000. So, uh, I think that that's a historical moment for me to compare and kind of look at how things are in, in that trend down. So, I mean, I think we're very similar right now and it tells me, it gives me a light at the end of the tunnel from, from where we are here in the metals market. Uh, Bill, if I could pivot for a second to the, the, the equity market, uh, Ian, if you want to bring up a slide like 24 or something, or, or one, one of those, if we just look at, look at the S&P 500 futures, um, yeah. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, j- just rank your level of concern here, like gl- like like running for the hills, being a ten, or nothing to see here, being a one. Yeah, I I, I put out research every morning. My team puts out research across all commodities. I I, I write the S and P and Nasdaq levels every morning. Um, I, I updated levels today. You know, we usually kind of keep it within you know hundred points, fifty, seventy points or so. As volatility picks up, let's start moving those levels out. And uh, today we updated all of our levels down. I have a couple here, you know, and I, I love nothing more. So we can even start from the bottom up. I love nothing more than than seeing levels reappear in the market for multiple reasons, separate reasons. Yeah. And, and what we got here is that 4,200, the S&P futures, you see that, that sort of triple top, November, uh, early, early in 2023, that we finally consolidated. We broke out like after, um, I, I call it synopsis earnings. They're the electronic design automation company for all the chip companies. But it was really NVIDIA, as everybody kind of looked at as big tailwind, AI is coming out that big breakout, but 4,200 was, was the big ceiling at that point. So 4,200 is actually now the 382 retracement back down to those lows. So that's, that's what I call rare major four-star support. And uh, I'm looking now, now we have measured downside. We have, we have panic yesterday. The markets like just crushed into the close crush. We opened up gap lower on the open today. So we now have panic. All right. I want to say, where do I want to buy into this measured downside? 4,200 is, is that measured downside. We have a big level as well. Another rare major four-star of 4,304. And then, um, you know, we, uh, above there, we got 4,327. And then today we opened up against 4,348.75. So 4,348.75, I'm looking at as a three-star and 4,340 as a two-star and then 4,327 as a three-star. Uh, as well. And then that moves into that 4304, which is a rare four star as well. So I think there's some good supports to lean into if you're trading or if you're investing, if you're investing. So I'm, I actually, we raised 10% cash and I was pretty, pretty, at, um, you know, pretty loud about it, talking about it on CNBC. I'm, you know, going there often talking about the stocks I, I trade and, and, and allocate to. Um, we raised 10% cash across the entire portfolio. We netted 10% at the end of July. I'm, I'm going shopping here this morning. I bought, I bought good timing. Like Oracle. Sorry. <laughs> good, good timing. Yeah, yeah, I and I'll actually be on CNBC here after uh, in, in a bit talking about these buys, but like Oracle, um, uh, a- Apple, I added to Apple increased that position, and, and Adobe, Adobe and Oracle new positions. Apple is uh, is a ad. Um, just allocating cash, just going going shopping, and giving this measure downside right now. So, and we got Fed Share Pal next Friday. We've had the panic. We know some levels. We know there's measured downside. I mean, it makes it makes sense to potentially see a little consolidation. Not to mention today's options expiration today. And you know, we always kind of have these these pummels into options expiration. Have and we could have a pretty significant bounce, I think, into into Powell. Now, what what happens for Powell? That that's that's to be a real question. Does does this uh, you know this uh, seasonality of torture continue, so to speak? A uh, question here from the the YouTube chat uh, asking about silver. If gold does bottom. Uh, Bill, will silver outperform as in previous longer term rallies or any thoughts on that silver gold ratio? Yeah, I I, I think uh, silver has uh, a really good reason to outperform. Um, it, it showed signs of that at the end of July. It, it, it was just melting higher. I think one of the things that, that was going on there and my my partner, Philip Strebel, he he does he, he's really into a lot of the metals and some of the news around metals. He, he's sort of my my earpiece to things, too. And he write he does a metals minute every morning talking about silver. Uh, he was talking about some of the de- physical deliver delivery problems that, that we may have seen more demand for physical delivery that could have been driving silver in the second half of July a bit, which was pretty interesting. Uh, so I kind of keep an ear to the ground on a lot of those uh, developments, um, especially something something like that happens. I think it can outperform to the upside. I want to see you know a move here in silver to twenty three fifty, and then from twenty three fifty we can start repairing some of the damage that that took place to start this month. All right. Yeah, I like those it, levels as well. Back above twenty six, I think things are really get going for silver, oh, yeah. silver futures. Yeah, there's a long term wedge. I, I don't know if I may have given that chart to you, but there's a long term wedge going back to that 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 high in 2011, that fifty fifty dollar high. Uh, so when we failed at 26 recently, that was you know pinging against the top side of that of that channel. Yeah. Uh, it, if we could break out of there, I mean, you know, to the moon, right? 
Hundred dollars silver? Yeah, right. <laughs> from your lips, Bill. From your lips. I hope. I want to. I want to uh, come back to this chart real quick. Absolutely, I love this chart with with the uh, the thirty year T bond again and the, and the Chinese yuan. I tend to. Uh, I like to look at at the yuan uh, overlay with the S and P five hundred, just because you know if if you know the second largest economy in the world, if if, if the the People's Bank of China, they're going out and. And, and they're devaluing their currency. It's it's probably because they're they're trying to soften, you know, an economic downturn, and that usually doesn't you know pan out well for for risk assets. That's kind of how, that's 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 a story I, I I get here from this chart, but I overlaid it, but took I took I took your chart and 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 I updated it to today, and I was just I was blown away by how closely gold futures, the thirty year T bond and one have traded together. Yeah. over the past year and a half. Yeah. And it it's, still seems uh, to be intact. So, you know, if rates continue to rise, bonds continue to roll over, and people's bank of China continue to devalue uh, the Chinese currency, then that's that's probably trouble ahead for gold. Yeah. And, that, and that's that's where I'm looking at here. Um, the, the there is CME group does have a Chinese yuan futures contract. It is tradable. Uh, not a lot of liquidity yet, but it's improving. And um, so I watch that closely day to day. And uh, it's, it's definitely up against some supply um, up, up to the upper side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're highlighting oil well there. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think the move has happened. I, I think from this perspective here, we're, we're getting close to a moment of October of last year. And again, I'm, I'm looking at parallels of situations and we're getting close to a situation of October of last year where J the Bank of Japan stepped in. With the China, or the Japanese yen was was just just it was melting away day after day, <laughs> and they uh, they stepped in, they bought the currency. So um, I don't know where where it comes from. I've actually even tried to try to start a little bit of a discussion on Twitter at times, and not not a whole lot of response to it. But but what you know what what's going to happen? How I see the Chinese, I see the Bank of Pe People's Bank of China buying the yuan. Or maybe maybe because the Bank of Japan is is close close to trade partners, somebody comes in here and defends the Chinese yuan. Uh, and and they, we heard some chirping from the from the PBOC uh, early early Thursday morning, yesterday morning, and the metal started to boogie a bit, and then it just got got flattened out uh, as the day. And gold actually closed at a new low, which actually gets me excited. That you get these like gold gold went up gold went up to uh, where was it 30, 1934 yesterday and finished mm -hmm. the day. Like eight hours later, 1915, on no news, literally no news, and yeah. that's the type of stuff where I think where where panic and bottoms can be made. And that's a big level around uh, 1915, 19 at the the retracement level here around 1910. And, you know, in in the 2011 peak for goals around 1925. So yeah, a lot yeah. of price memory uh, around here. You know, when I when I zoom out, so this, this is a big level tactically around 1900. You know, lose that level. Maybe we head back down towards 18, you know. Uh, but when I when I zoom out and, and and look at the gold futures, I see that that big cup and potential handle here. And maybe the handle's forming an inverted head and shoulders. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe, you know, gold needs just a little bit more time. Again, maybe maybe it rolls over and we get that 18 handle. Um, and you know, it 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 digs in and then then we resolve higher. Yeah, that, that's that's where we are. We're like on a knife's edge, and I, and I keep saying like it's do or die here. And um, you know, it's we this that 2011 high. We're battling against it. You know, 1911, 1900, and we if we surrender 1900, you know, it could be very likely to see see a significant move move lower. Um, and, and you know, I think you got to back the truck up and say, okay, why did gold rally this year? And it was the banking crisis. I mean, we rallied a hundred dollars in a matter of like three days or something. Mm -hmm. And and now there is you know the bank the banks I think all the news is baked in I mean so yeah no no wonder and in, in hindsight you know visions twenty twenty that that gold gold's come off a bit so we need another catalyst and that that could be you know that five point eight percent GDP starting to come down and then and then you start to see some rate cuts priced in you know Goldman Sachs already called them up for June or July next year we start seeing that that being moved up there you go you got you got the catalyst for gold break all right. Yeah. All right, Bill, we'll let you run. We're going to hop as well. Bill Baruch, president of Blue Line Futures and Blue Line Capital. Bill, uh, you well, thank you so much for your time. You can see Bill on every channel on your TV. He's on CNBC. He's on Fox, and that might be actually it. I don't know if he's on every channel, but he's on a couple channels. <laughs> so, uh, Bill, thanks so much for the time, and we appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure.
All right, awesome. that'll be a wrap for us. We'll be back on a Wednesday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. If you're watching us on YouTube, drop us a like. We'd appreciate that. If you're watching us on Twitter, head on over to YouTube. Hit the like. Thank you so much. Ian, any final thoughts? Have a great weekend. That's it. Get outside. Have a good one, everyone. That's right.